Now then, we're going to talk about joysticks. This is an Atari 2600 joystick from like 1977. Old, yes, but well built. Well, mostly. But uh, it's got a problem. If you got a joystick like this, an old 8 retro bit computers, then you know what I'm talking about. So, this thing usually suffers from a couple of problems. One or either or both. And I'll get into that when I take this joystick apart. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so what, what's this joystick? What, what, what is its problem? Its problem is... Get a close-up view here. Uh, you go to the right, and it, it doesn't work. It doesn't register. So we're going to take this apart. Four screws. Holding it on. Yeah, I could speed this up, but where's the fun in that? So I got this connected up to a Commodore 64, stalling for time while I take this apart. And well, I'm sorry, I got it. I got it connected to a Commodore 128 and 64 mode. Let's see. that I'm an expert on this. Uh, okay, so the first the first thing usually well not the first thing but sometimes the problem with these things is that the uh, the pads get worn down. You see that? Where's the camera? Right there. These the pads get worn down. So something else we can do is test this. So all that's working, the fire button is working. Um, if you got it plugged up into joystick port number number one, which which I do, see, then that also goes through the chip that handles the keyboard. And so if you uh, well, my button quit working. So if you hit like the left pad on the joystick, it will simulate the, I think it's the control key on the keyboard. Yeah. So just so you know that. So testing all this stuff. Okay. So the pads are fine. Nothing wrong with the pads. What's the problem? The problem is take that out like that. This this goes in here like that. The problem is this thing. You can't see it. Too good. In a close-up camera. Let's see. Close 
up with this. Maybe. Alright, here we go. Now I've already fixed this, but the problem is these these break real easy. And I've hot glued that together. Okay? But these these are very thin. They break real easy. You know, people are too hard on them or whatever. And uh, they just break. You know? So, that's what happens. So, I just take my glue gun right here that's bright okay and just you know glued it glued it and that's it you know so now if the pads are like been pressed a whole lot then it's kind of harder to fix that but that's possible too because there's a clear plastic piece on here, but uh, that you can lift up and, and try to to maybe put in a, another little metal piece. But yeah, that's pretty tough. So it's easier if it's just this this part right here. Let me switch shots again. Okay. So now the reassembly part. So you take this. That. Take the fire button and be careful. The fire button's got a little spring in it, and I find it easier to to take the, the circuit circuit board and to it's got two tabs in there and just uh, go ahead and line it up. get it <laughs> and that's like let's make sure that uh man that took forever dude okay so right left up down okay yeah now back in it and this is just a suggestion but when you put it back together do not tighten the screws up real tight because it's old plastic and it will break I just snug them it's a, it's a lot little snug Screw them back out if you feel like it's going in wrong, you know what I mean? Just a little, just a little lot snug. It's not to break the, uh, the posts inside. Almost done. Exciting, isn't it? Touching joystick, it automatically goes to 255. That's the default value for joystick port number one. Anyway, left, yes, that's simulating the control key. So that's it. I mean, that's you know, that's all I got to show you. So until next time, this is Scotty and Scotty Animation.